at 50. Congestion and pollution plagues every modern city. Roads cannot cope with the numbers of cars and buses, and metros are oversubscribed. What our cities desperately need is a new high-tech public transport system. Maglev also, I think, does have a lower speed application. Um, Japanese company HSST has got, uh, in my view, a technology which has got nice characteristics for urban applications. It's the type of system that uh, could be used for downtown people movers to provide a linkage of, uh, of, of downtown buildings. It may not be as swanky as its big brother, but HSST works on exactly the same magnetic principles as its high-speed sibling. It turns out that all the characteristics developed for speed are also useful in an urban transport system. Gripping the track provides safety. Magnets are non-polluting, and magnetic force can even cope with the most extreme weather. And because it's slower, it doesn't need powerful and expensive magnets, but smaller ones that can be laid on the track for a fraction of the cost. We have developed it as a high-speed urban transportation system with a top speed of 100 kilometers per hour. As it's floating, there is very little noise or vibration, and there is no pollution, which means it is an ideal transportation system for the city. HSST is operating trains with three carriages. These trains do not have drivers. This plan has already been put into effect and I believe it will be a very important transport system in the 21st century. In 20 years' time, I think that uh, low-speed maglev rail systems will be really providing urban people-mover type systems. With commuters in some parts of the world already spending up to three hours a day stuck in traffic, HSST could offer a unique solution to gridlock what started as an expensive experiment may yet prove to be the answer to our urban transport problems. However smart these ground transport solutions, they alone won't be enough to solve future transport problems. Perhaps it's time to look to the skies. But today's aircraft won't be able to cope with the ever-increasing number of passengers and cargo. And the high-tech alternatives, the rocket ships and space planes we've been promised, are still firmly in the realms of science fiction. Which is why some scientists believe we may already have the solution right under our noses, in the shape of a 100-year-old idea. The airship, quiet, spacious, environmentally friendly, and able to carry hundreds of passengers or tons of cargo. A new era in giant airships is beginning back at the Zeppelin factory in Germany with the revolutionary LZ N07. The flight test phase is over, so it means we know everything of the behavior of the ship. And also we improved, of course, certain parts of the ship and we are ready for certification now. Zeppelin have used space-age materials and state-of-the-art engineering to construct their lighter-than-air craft, which they predict will take the transport world by storm, just as airships like these did decades ago. Most of these early airships were rigid, with an elaborate internal skeleton of heavy metal beams. Their huge envelopes were filled with the lightest gas, hydrogen. But this design was fatally flawed, when the Hindenburg exploded into a fireball, it was the beginning of the end for the airship. As a result, today's airships, nicknamed blimps, have no practical use for transportation and are seldom more than floating billboards for advertising. Their simple structure is non-rigid, where only the internal pressure of the gas maintains the shape of the envelope. Zeppelin have pushed the boundaries of airship technology even further. Their new design is more than just a bag of gas like a blimp. At 
quite lighter and more manoeuvrable than rigid airships. It combines the best of the past with the best of the present to create a revolutionary design for the future. Dr. Strata, Zeppelin's CEO, explains. This is a totally new approach, of course. The old Zeppelin was a rigid structure. The disadvantage of this structure is, of course, the weight. And if you're going to the aviation, always weight is a critical uh, parameter. And therefore, we looked for extreme lightweight uh, design and construction. This is carbon fiber, and that's the lightest material. And that means most of the parts are used from this uh, or made by this material. And the rest, where we need another stiffness parameters, is made from very light aluminium, of course. Everything which is common in aviation and space industry. I ask uh, always uh, people visiting uh, the, the company, uh, what's the estimation of the weight? And their estimation is 500 kilos, 700 kilos, and in reality it's uh, 95 kilos. So that means you can see the differences. <laughs> the Zeppelin's revolutionary design isn't just light. Its new propulsion system gives it greater safety and maneuverability than ever achieved before. We designed a new propulsion system and you see propellers and we have three engine groups on both sides and at the rear end and these propellers are swiveling propellers and that means we can start and land like a helicopter. This increased maneuverability together with a state-of-the-art cockpit makes the once dangerous takeoff procedure now both safe and simple. After we have the clearance from the tower, then we tell the crew chief that we're ready to go off mast. And all these handles then at that time are forward here. And then as we're ready to take off, we lift the vectors and give power with these when the ship lifts almost vertically. Zeppelin's new airship can transport 12 passengers at cruising speeds of 80 miles an hour. Future models could carry many more. But when it comes to solving future transport problems, Zeppelin's new passenger model is just the beginning. The real challenge for the future is cargo transport. If the burden of moving goods and machinery around the world could be taken off the roads, it might make travelling for the rest of us much more bearable. Could an airship, larger, sleeker and faster than ever before, be the answer? It seems so. Grand Air Force Base in the former East Germany, once home to Russian fighter aircraft during the Cold War, is now a centre of airship excellence. Here, engineers have plans to build the biggest and most ambitious airship yet. The cargo lifter will carry payloads of up to 160 tonnes. That's the weight of a jumbo jet. The, the cargo lifter is the basic idea to combine an airship with a crane system. The major job they will do, they will transport heavy lift outside goods. Just to give you a comparison, the size of the goods is about 50 meters long, 10 meters wide, 10 meters high. So this is a, a three-store building, actually, what, what we can transport. So we are focusing on these heavy machinery parts out of the power plant industry, civil engineering industry, out of the oil industry. So we can transport high-volume goods, what's not possible today. The cargo lifter will be so big that a special purpose hangar has been designed to house the first two models and to serve as a production facility. It will be the largest hangar on Earth. But before the full-scale cargo lifter can be produced, a smaller prototype model must be put through its paces to see if the new technology will work. This is the one-eighth scale model of the cargo lifter, affectionately named Joey. We are very satisfied with the flight tests we have done so far. Uh, Joey serves many important purposes for us in the development process and in the construction process of the cargo lifter because it was a, uh, a kind of rehearsal for us. Joey's success has allowed the engineers to begin production of the full-scale model.
These airships will provide an environmentally friendly, efficient and elegant way of ferrying vast cargoes around the world. Relieving the pressures on ground transportation could yet see the return of giant airships to our skies.